It was an insane feeling to be in this big wild ocean and then seeing that the fish would come up every single day, twice a day, to participate in our experiments. Our study showed that fish could discriminate between different humans. And our results suggest that the cues that they are using to differentiate between humans is mostly color cues that are on the wetsuits or on the diving gear of the divers. In 2019, we have really good footage of uh, one of our colleagues, Zoe, diving. And she was followed by a lot, a lot of different species of fish. And that kind of yeah, brought the question with it, like, why do they follow? this specific diver? Why do they not follow the other divers? Can they remember that it was her or not? When I started the training and I was sitting down there, in the very beginning I could see it was very unusual for them, but it didn't take long until they were growing fond of me being there, especially once I started feeding them with little pieces of shrimp. And after some time of the training, I could really see it's always the same individuals. It's always that one that has one scale that looks a bit different behind the head or another one that had um, a cut in the tail. And after some time, you just look at the fish quite often and you realize that they all look different. So after the training phase, we started with uh, phase one, as we called it. In phase one of the experiment, Mylan and me were wearing our personal dive gear, which was different in coloration. We did the exact same setup as I did in the training phase on my own. And we wanted to see which diver they would follow and which they would not. So I was not there when Katinga was doing the training. So my first experience with the fish was during the experiment when we both dived down. And it was quite amazing to see how quickly fish were gathering around us and they were coming from everywhere and from nowhere at the same time. And I was, wow, this is amazing. They're really coming towards us. Then we did this experiment where Katinka and I swam in different directions and we wanted to know which divers the fish would follow. On the first day, the fish followed us both equally, so we didn't really think they could tell us apart. But on the second day already, almost all of the fish were following only Katinka. So there it was. We had our answer. Fish could tell us apart underwater and they could recognize human divers. In experiment two, we got rid of the visual differences between the humans as much as we could. And so we were wearing exactly the same dive gear. So the same wetsuits, fins, mask, etc. And we did exactly the same. The two, do, the two divers were swimming in different directions and we wanted to see which one they would choose. And what we saw is utter confusion. <laughs> They really didn't know which one to choose. They were always swimming between both divers. And in the end, we don't have evidence that they actually chose a diver more than the other. And so we don't think that in the time that we left them for this experiment, they managed to discriminate between both of us anymore. It was heartbreaking to see that they tried because they were still very curious. They did not let go of the experiment. They did not not show up anymore. They were still there every single dive and tried to figure out the new situation. So the mechanism be behind individual human recognition is actually fairly easy. It's pattern recognition, so they recognize certain shapes, they can recognize certain colors, and they can associate it with experiences, good or bad. So it's not surprising that they can adapt and use these skills to humans and adapt it to humans. It's crazy to know that it's not just us who are interested in them, but they are interested in us and they want to work with us. And it's a very special feeling. For decades now, we've been asking fish questions, but it's always them in tanks or we always constrain them to get our answers. And it was very special to this time be, okay, we are going into their world and we are letting them answer willingly. If they don't want to engage, then it's okay. And it was amazing to see the participation and the engagement and the willingness and the curiosity of the fish coming to us. So it really taught me how to ask more relevant questions, because now with this approach in research, if you capitalize on this connection that you can make with the animals, you can really dive deep into their cognitive abilities and their intelligence.